Hello everyone, today we will be talking about middle adulthood. As more people lead healthier lifestyles and medical discoveries help to stave off the aging process, the boundaries of middle age are being pushed upward. Middle age is starting later and lasting longer. Middle adulthood is the developmental period that begins at about age 40 and extends to about 60 years of age. Usually the first outwardly visible signs of aging are apparent by the 40s or 50s, and these include wrinkles, gray hair, weight gain, and loss in height, about half an inch per decade starting in the 40s. Other signs defining middle adulthood include vision and accommodation, which is the ability of the eyes to focus and maintain an image on the retina, leading to an experience of its sharpest that declines between the ages of 40 and 59 years of age. There's also difficulty viewing um, objects closely, causing many to wear bifocal glasses and evidence that the retina becomes less sensitive to low levels of illumination. Hearing may also start to decline by age 40. Sensitivity to high pitches declines first, while the ability to distinguish low-pitched sounds doesn't seem to decline much in middle adulthood. Men usually use, lose their sensitivity to high-pitched sounds sooner than women do. There is a high heritability component to this, so if your dad had significant hearing loss, you are likely to experience similar declines. Muscular strength declines which is the ability um, to also to condition those muscle also decreases with age as well. Less so if you've been consistently active. In middle age, most people notice joint stiffness and more difficulty in movement. Again, this is decreased, uh, this is a decreased likelihood of experiencing this if you remain active. Maximum bone density occurs in the mid to late 30s then a progressive decline within this um, area begins slowly and accelerates in your 50s. Women have bone loss twice at the rate of men experience, and this is due to estrogens plus pregnancy and lactation plus their diet. Bones break more easily and heal more slowly because of this. Beginning in the mid 40s, Wakeful periods are more frequent for individuals. Individuals experience less stage four sleep, which is the deepest, most restorative stage of sleep. These individuals spend more time laying awake, which equals feeling less rested in the morning. Sleep problems are part of normal aging and may be aided by prescription and non-prescription medication, though the frontline treatment of this behavioral problem is therapeutic services like cognitive behavioral therapy. Sleep problems are also linked to obesity, cardiovascular disease, and depression. So you can start to hear a running theme of the negative outcomes for all of these unhealthy type of behaviors. So there's also reciprocal relationships between these variables and sleep. The effects of smoking and other um, negative lifestyle habits are also becoming noticeable during this period as unhealthy habits start to appear given their long-term consequences. So these may include heart disease is being detected at this time, cancers are more common during this period, and chronic diseases start to appear. Relatedly, chronic stress dampens the immune system, making it more difficult to fight off infection. Chronic stressors are long-lasting ones that occur frequently and more often. Acute stressors are temporary and are less likely to affect the immune functioning. Stress also affects behavior that in turn affects health by uh, influencing what you eat. So for example, a quick example would be you during finals when you're stressed you're more apt to eat sweets or fast food because they're fast they're cheap and they're what you crave if you're stressed you may be less um, inclined to work out or engage in substance use to help cope with that stress stress may be due to multiple factors but one main area includes work in the u.s approximately 80 percent of individuals aged 40 to 59 are employed work satisfaction increases steadily throughout the work life from ages 
or excuse me, from ages 20 to 60. Midlife presents more opportunities for leisure activities uh, like paid vacations and um, having a higher income. And most adults are still physically active enough to enjoy many leisurely activities. Uh, leisurely activities are related to life satisfaction, which helps the individual to lead a balanced type of life. In terms of cultural differences, Americans take a lot less time off compared with European counterparts because they are trying to increase their productivity, but ultimately this ends up increasing our stress, which leads to more days off because of illness, because our immune system is compromised due to the stress, and ultimately we're less productive. So it's contra, um, contradictory almost uh, type of process that's occurring right there. So you can see the cycle and how it can easily go south. Menopause is a time in middle age, uh, usually between late 40s and early 50s, uh, when a woman's menstrual period starts to cease. This is gradual rather than just a sudden process, and there is a dramatic decline in the production of estrogen by the ovaries, producing some uncomfortable symptoms such as hot flashes, nausea, fatigue, and rapid heartbeats. Um, so some women report depression and irritability, but most do not. Therapies for this include hormone replacement therapy, which can relieve many of the negative symptoms experienced by these individuals through this period. Recently, um, hormone replacement therapy, or HRT, has been associated with increased risk of stroke and increased risk of dementia. Despite this, women also experience a lowered risk of hip fractures and no increase in risk of heart attacks or breast cancer. Many Asian women and women in traditional societies do not report some of the negative side effects of menopause as American women do. Um, interestingly enough, this might be due to diet, exercise, and workload for those individuals. So what about males? What happens to males within middle adulthood? Males actually don't have anything that complete, completely ceases production due to the costs of reproduction that are much more different between the sexes. Testosterone production be begins to actually decline about 1% a year during middle adulthood. And sperm count shows a slow decline, but men do not lose their fertility in middle age. Due to the drop in testosterone levels, men's sexual drive, uh, their drives often lessen, and erections are less full, less frequent, and require more stimulation to achieve them. Loss of hormones during this period does not mean a complete loss of sexual activity. The ability of men and women to function sexually shows little biological decline in middle adulthood. Sexual activity usually occurs on a less frequent basis than in early adulthood and is linked with individuals, career interests, family matters, energy level, and routine. Switching gears and talking about memory, fluid intelligence is one's ability to reason abstractly begins, this actually begins to decline in middle adulthood. Crystallized intelligence in individual um, accumulated information and verbal skills actually continues to increase in middle adulthood. The good news and something to look forward to is that the highest level of functioning uh, for four of the six intellectual abilities has been found to occur in the middle adult years. In one study, it was demonstrated that verbal memory peaked in the 50s. On the other hand, a researcher named Denise Park um, started arguing that in late middle age, more time is needed to learn more information or new information. Memory decline is more likely to occur when individuals don't use effective memory strategies such as organization and memory. Middle aged people report more difficulty remembering names than younger people. In addition to gains in vocabulary, gains are also seen in the following area. So, expertise appears more often middle adulthood and problem solving abilities are also at their highest. And here we'll talk about socio-developmental, um, socio-emotional. 
And here we'll talk about the social emotional development within middle adulthood. So Erickson, in terms of Erickson's stages, um, we're starting to see this transition to the generativity versus stagnation stage. And with generativity, this is where adults desire to leave a legacy of themselves to the next generation and to achieve a kind of immortality that will be carried on uh, once they are gone. And so their work towards the improvement of the society as a whole by connecting to the next generation through parenting, teaching, leading, mentoring, etc. So that way they develop a positive legacy of themselves. It can develop in multiple ways. Um, this could look like biological generativity through their off offspring, parental generativity by nurturing and guiding children, uh, work generativity by developing skills that are passed down to others, and cultural by working to create, renovate, and conserve an aspect of culture that survives generations. So if they do not engage in these behaviors successfully, they experience stagnation or a type of self-absorption which develops when an individual um, since has a uh, is very self-absorbed in themselves and they have done little for the next generation. The timetable describes when individuals are expected to accomplish life tasks such as getting married, having children, or establishing a career. Not following the social clock results in stress for some. A lot depends on who you're comparing yourself to. Um, so what are your goals and how do you plan to accomplish them? What are obstacles that may be getting in your way? Um, what are your alternate plans? The social clock has become less rigid in the past two decades. This is due to longer lives and a different social culture. Actually, most do not experience a midlife crisis um, during this period, and many studies have shown that middle-aged adults have a greater sense of control in their work, a greater sense of environmental mastery, more autonomy, more power, and greater financial security. Uh, women experience more stress related to social stressors like romance, family, and work resulting in a higher depression rate. Um, stress and social clock is totally social in nature and context dependent. For example, our social clock is different that um, than those that were uh, middle uh, within the middle adulthood range uh, within the Great Depression, for example, and what was expected of them. Um, so it's totally social and context dependent. So in many other cultures, this is not a concept for middle adults. Individuals are either young or old, or um, their age and developmental period is determined by other socially constructed concepts like, like uh, life experience and wisdom. And so that's how you know that you're transitioning from one period to another. In a study of 40 to 80 year olds, participants were followed over 10 years and assessed using various uh, personality tests. The most, uh, the most stable traits were styles of coping, being satisfied with life, and being goal-directed. Over time, people became more passive and likely to be threatened by their environment. In another study, a thousand college students um, are, let me backtrack that. So in another study, a thousand college-educated people between the ages of 20 to 96 were assessed um, using the big five personality traits, um, and so they were assessed over many years. Results indicated stability in all five, tra uh, all five traits over time. So openness, agreeableness, extrovers extroversion, and neuroticism, which is emotional stability, peaked between 40 and 60 years of age and decreased uh, what we would see um, over time is that it decreased after uh, this period of time. Actually, within the Big Five, conscientiousness actually increased uh, throughout the years as opposed to the other four. So the Big Five predicts health outcomes including physical health, blood pressure, and activity level. They specifically found that openness was linked with higher IQ in one study and conscientiousness linked with college GPA, which is not so surprising on either account. Affectionate 
and or companion love increases during middle adulthood. So security, loyalty, and mutual emotional interests become more important as relationships mature. For married individuals in midlife, most boys consider uh, considerable satisfaction with being married. And what they found is that actually 72% of married individuals uh, reported this in a recent study. Um, individuals may experience the empty, empty nest syndrome, which can lead to a decrease in marital satisfaction and feelings of sadness loss due to the children's departure, which leaves parents with an empty feeling. Parents who live vicariously through their children um, are more likely to experience the empty nest syndrome um, based on the, their identification with being a parent more so than just living vicariously through their children. Um, most parents do not experience uh, less marital satisfaction. In fact, for many, it increases after their children have left home. When discussing sexuality in middle adulthood, the majority of older couples are actually sexually active. There are a few key changes that occur in middle adulthood, like orgasms becoming less frequent and males may needing more um, direct stimulation to produce an erection. Leading to our next discussion with older adults, there are considerations to discussing this change in sexuality in middle to um, older adulthood that impact daily living. And these may include more um, common medications which cause sexual side effects like the loss of libido or even vaginal dryness. Um, obviously, given these possible changes in adulthood, it's incumbent upon health professionals to talk with patients about sexual side effects and how to actually cope with these. Um, and so with that, that wraps up this lecture.